Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the analytics corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. I'm located in beautiful Whitefish, Montana, and you can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. It makes me oh so happy to see that number go up. Okay, my next couple of posts are going to be on Alteryx apps. Last week I built my first app, and my blog post was a how-to tutorial on building an app with a pre-populated dropdown. This week I added on to that app, and as I added on to it, the app became more complicated and I started running into problems. There were a few things I didn't know how to do, so I reached out to the Alteryx Virtual Solution Center for assistance, and when we worked together on the app, the VSC showed me how to debug apps. And knowing how to debug can be critical to producing successful apps. So with that said, I want to give a big thank you to Katie Brooks with Alteryx. Katie and I know each other because she helped me roll out Alteryx at SM Energy when we first started with the application. She occasionally picks up tickets through the VSC, and she saw my ticket come across and picked it up right away. So thank you, Katie. I appreciate it. Okay, so we'll start talking about why you need to debug an app. When you run workflows that are not apps, there is no need to debug. You can click on any input or output anchor to see what's flowing through the tool. So standard workflows essentially contain native debugging, if you will. However, when you run a workflow as an analytic app, that's not the case. So for example, I'm going to hit the wizard button and run my workflow choosing operator number eight. I'll hit run all data and click next and finish. And then if I come through and click on the output anchor for some of my tools, you'll see what shows up here is what gets populated when I hit the run button. It's essentially what's in my filter tool here. This is why you need debug. Fortunately, debugging is super simple. Debugging starts in the interface designer pane. The interface designer pane is not open by default, so you may need to go to the view menu to turn it on. Mine is already open, and so I'll just click on it and then go to test view. So in order to debug my app, I need to make selections relevant to my app tools. So I'm going to choose operator 4 and run all data. And then you click on the open debug button. This will open an entirely separate version of your workflow specifically for the purpose of debugging. All of the debugging workflows will have this big comment box here, and you can see it shows the values that I have selected from my app tools. And all you have to do is come over and hit run. Then you can treat it just like you would a standard workflow and look at the contents of the input and the output anchors and see everything that's flowing through each tool just like you would a standard workflow. Now, there will be some differences. You may notice that this workflow doesn't look exactly like my other workflow. You see I have an empty container here. This container is closed. That's because this is what uh, my app is actually doing when the app runs. Because I didn't specify a date range, these tools aren't used and aren't necessary, so this is empty. And then the way my app actually works is I have two containers here. Uh, this one is called date range specific and this is called all. So if the user wants to see a specific date range, this container stays open if, and this one is closed. If a user wants to query all data, this container is closed and this one stays open. And this functionality in and of itself, the ability to open and close containers with apps is pretty cool and I will do a blog post on how to make this work uh, in the next week or so. And so that's why I have a closed container. And then if I scroll down a little bit, here is where my data actually flowed. And so now I can see operator four. These are my three columns. If I were experiencing issues with this, this is where I would realize that, oh, there is no data coming out of my dynamic input or my dynamic query. So now I know I need to take a look at that tool specifically and see what's going on and figure out why I don't have any data coming out of the query. And that's really all there is to it. It's quite simple. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share, and comment. I'd love to hear about your Alteryx experiences, and have a great week. Thanks.